I know it's been a while since I have posted a video, so I want to let you know I've been trying to post one for a couple weeks, and for some reason it hasn't been posting. So I did uh, recently delete over half of the videos on my channel, and I don't know if that's part of the reason I haven't been able to post anything, uh, but um, I also have the new iPhone Pro Max 11 or whatever it's called. I've got the top of the line phone and for some reason I made the video on my phone and it's not posting to YouTube and I think it's on YouTube's end not my phone's end. So um, anyway I decided to remake the video here on my um, iMac and uh, we'll see how it goes. So the video is about pigments and um, the properties of pigments and how to pick paints uh, when you are uh, a new artist or I honestly at any stage I uh, just you know it's really important to learn about your paints and the paints are made up of pigments and a binder and sometimes there's a filler too especially on the cheaper uh, paints and uh, so the, the difference between student grade and uh, like a professional artist grade um, besides the cost is the fact that there's going to be a higher pigment load so it's more concentrated and uh, so you're going to get a lot more coverage and a lot more vibrancy from the professional level paints. And honestly, I found that sometimes you even save money because you're getting more for your money. Um, and with the student grade, they are nice for maybe a beginning projects, but um, they're not going to have the same quality or the same coverage. If you think about cheap house paint and how maybe you've notice that you've had to do like an extra coat of paint just to get coverage. It's kind of the same idea in some ways that, um, you know, like if they water it down, is that really saving you any money? But um, at the same time, um, definitely I, I don't have any problem with the student level. But for me, um, anyone who's serious about art, or if you're a professional artist and you're selling your art, it's definitely uh, important to invest in the professional and the highest quality paints you can afford. So uh, if you think about pigments, they come with names, and sometimes it's hard to know exactly what the name is, some, or what exactly you're getting, especially if it has some sort of de designer name. And um, you may be between brands, uh, they'll have different reds, and sometimes they'll use the name of the pigment that's in it, but sometimes it's a blend of more than one pigment. Um, so how do you know what to look for, what you're getting? Uh, well, one way is to look at the, the back of the tube, like the ingredient list. It should tell you the name of the, pe the pigment. It should have the chemical chemistry name, the alchemical name, which will be probably letters and numbers. And I know I shop online a lot, so like at Blick Art, they'll have the pigment info. You can click on it, and then it'll uh, tell you all about the pigment. It'll have swatches of the pigment and um, the chemical name, so you can identify by that chemical number. Um, or like I said, it's a letter and a number combo. And so um, maybe between different brands, you can notice that if it has the same number, then that's um, going to be the same pigment. So, for example, Grumbacher Red, and the Grumbacher is Naphthal Red. Um, but then some another company calls it Fanshone Red. It's all the same pigment. And um, so they're just giving it different names. Naphthol is probably the most uh, authentic, but again, um, you still can't even go by that. You need to go by the number if you want to be precise. So um, the pigments are either organic, inorganic, or a synthetic. So uh, for example, if it's inorganic, it's like a mineral, like 
um, cobalt or cadmium or nickel and then you have um, plant-based or like carbon-based pigments and then like I said synthetic ones which a lot of times they might be a synthetic of a a mineral like cobalt like a, a cerulean blue a lot of times it will say hue in the name H U E and that lets you know that it's not the main the real pigment but it's a synthetic version of it and reasons you might want to use a, a hue or a synthetic is a lot of times it's it is less money even though it's a professional paint it's going to be less money than I uh, I mean some of these really high end um or rare like um the vermilion or the cobalts they can be like 50 or higher US dollars per little tiny tube they can really add up so um, sometimes the hue will be like half or even less than half that price a lot of times a lot less so um, that's one reason and another reason is sometimes people want to avoid the toxicity of the heavy metals so they might choose the hue for um, safety or environmental reasons they feel like it's better for the environment so those are some reasons. And now the binders that the pigments, if it's oil-based paint, uh, it'll be mixed with an oil. So a drying oil, it couldn't be olive oil or canola oil. It would have to be like usually linseed oil is what I use in my, um, the paints I choose. Uh, some people buy paints or make paints with poppy seed oil. And I've heard that it doesn't yellow as much as the linseed oil. So for especially like the whites, um, that might come in handy. And I haven't really had experience to say either way, so I can't really give an opinion on that. Um, there's also walnut oil as a drying oil, but like I said, it has to be an oil that will dry and create a hard paint. It can't be, like I said, olive oil, um, isn't a drying oil so um, it's not a good oil to use so if you're using acrylic paints they're mixed in an acrylic binder which is basically it's plastic so you need to just realize um, the good thing about the acrylic paints is they are water-based so um, you don't have to use any solvents with them or um, for cleanup or thinning um, you can do it all with water so um, they are different though. Um, I don't think that they look as pure as um, the oil paints, but they have their benefits. Like I said, the cleanup and the, some people don't like the, to work with the solvents. So there's that factor. And then just they dry a lot quicker and um, are more affordable. Um, overall so there's a lot of things that people like about acrylics I I think that some of the drawbacks are they just don't look as beautiful uh, as they they have that plastic look to them and um, there's just no way around that they've come a long way there's so many mediums now that uh, for example Golden's making to to stretch the the look and the um, effects you can get with the acrylic paints so that is kind of cool I definitely use the glazing uh, mediums and gels and um, also some that extend the dry time so that they act more like oil paints you can blend them a little longer they've even come out a Golden's come out with an op like um they started it for plain air painters, but it's a a line of acrylic paints that is supposed to be um, slower drying. And I haven't tried them yet, so I can't really comment on that. I just noticed them online. But anyway, um, anything else about pigments? Some are opaque, some are transparent. As you can see. Um, Sometimes on the swatches they put on the labels, you can see if it's completely covering um, or if it's showing a transparency. Um, 
that's um, a property of the pigment. And some pigments um, do tend to dry faster than others. I think the more organic ones, like um, the iron oxides and burnt umber, those ones dry, to, I believe, the fastest. Um, titanium white and the yellows are some of the slowest dryings and also some of the really transparent glazes like Indian orange takes a long time to dry. I'm not sure why. So a lot of times, uh, like I said, I'll try to slow down the drying um, time with acrylic paints, but I'll try to sometimes hasten the drying time with the oil paints. So I will sometimes use medium. So I I definitely use Gamsol, which is um, an odorless mineral spirit. It's not as toxic or um, strong as like white spirits, which will like eat through plastic. I'll put my Gamsol in a plastic cup, and it's fine. Um, and I don't. It doesn't bother me. Some people who might be extra sensitive might still be bothered by it, but I have no problems with Gam um, Gamsol. Um, but yeah, there's other mineral spirits and white spirits. I even have a lavender spike oil. Some people use turpentine. Um, but the white spirits definitely eat right through anything plastic. It has to be kept in glass or metal. So um, then I, I have some mediums I've used. Like I said, um, there's a bunch online. Different paint companies make mediums to go. I, I can't think of all their names here. I think, is it Schmincke has some that are just numbers, like one and two. And I use the one for like some of the under layers and sometimes two for glazes. And it does also hasten the drying time. So uh, anyway, I hope that this has answered some of your questions or maybe even piqued your curiosity about some of the qualities and facts about pigments in paints. And if you have any questions, leave them below. I'm happy to uh, try to answer your questions as best as possible. And so just on a final note, I deleted a bunch of videos just because I'm getting enough subscribers now. I'm trying to be a little more private uh, and respect the privacy of family members and I've um, blocked or I've made private most of my vlogging videos and travel videos and um, we'll keep doing these tutorials and this type of video in the future.